Now, not all simple machines are 100% efficient. So what that means is that sometimes, or most of the time, or actually we should say all the time, really, here, if you're talking about real machines, okay, real machines always lose some of the work towards inefficiencies. It could be heat buildup, it could be sound, it could be vibration, it could be de deformation. There's lots of different ways that some of the energy that we put in or work we put in doesn't come back out at us, okay? A lot of it has to do with friction and heat buildup uh, and those kind of things, okay? So in that case, we actually can track the efficiencies of a simple machines, right? So a perfect world, we'd have the mechanical advantage was equal to the IMA, but it's not a perfect world, okay? Um, so in reality, what happens is, is your mechanical advantage is always less than IMA, always, okay? If you ever get a scenario where you think your mechanical advantage is greater then the ideal mechanical advantage, either A, you got it wrong, or B, you just broke the laws of physics, and if you're right, you're going to make billions and billions of dollars, okay? So I'm guessing it's me A, though. I'm sorry, but that's the way it's going to be, okay? So let's take a look and see how that affects us in terms of our efficiencies. We're going to go back to this idea of this perspective, okay? Um, looking at work and mechanical advantage, all right? So first one is, if we had to deal with our efficiencies, we're just going to use lowercase e for this, okay? The efficiency of any machine is the work you output divided by the work you input times 100 to get a percentage, okay? This is only here to get a percentage on this one. The other way you could calculate it is that your efficiency is your mechanical advantage that you have divided by your ideal mechanical advantage to get to 100, okay? Times 100 for your 100%. Okay. So depending on what you know, you might know your work in, your work out. In that case, you might know force and displacement, force and displacement here also. Or you might know the actual mechanical advantages for this. Right? That's how we solve it. Now, let's go back to our actual problem that we're dealing with here. And let's say our machine is not 100% efficient. Okay, So we still have the lever raising the box 10 feet and the opposite side of the fulcrum, it's 2 feet. Okay. And our lever now has an efficiency of 95%, which is pretty good, you know, for a simple machine like this. 95% efficient would be pretty quality there, okay? We calculated before that we needed 250 um, newtons of force for that weight of 50 newtons, okay? But if we're only 95% efficient, what is our um, real force that we need, okay? So go ahead and use either equation from our previous slide, okay, either this one or this one, either one of these two, and let's solve for what is the actual force we're going to need, okay, that to make this happen. It will not be 250, okay? In fact, it should be more than 250 because we only have 95% of what we need, okay? Go ahead and solve it, and we'll come back in a second, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here we go. Uh, we know that our... Um, force that we should be putting in. Okay. So I'm going to do this through the lens of work. So work out versus work in. Work out versus work in. Okay. Ideally that when we do this we should be we should be getting a force that is 250 but we don't. Okay. So the work that we input in this scenario um, was two meters times x, or force of input, we don't know that, and the output we got, well, it went 10 meters distance, and we are raising a 50 newton container, okay? So this is the height, or our distance effort, this is, sorry, not effort, I apologize. This is our distance of resistance. This is our force of resistance right here. These we know, okay? We know that the distance of our effort was 2, so we're solving for the force of our effort right here, okay? So plug the numbers in, and now this has to equal our efficiency, right? So our efficiency here is 95% efficient, or it's 0.95, okay? Okay? So now we just solve this. So here's our setup, okay? So first I want to get that force of effort out of that denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that 10 times my 50 divided by 2 divided by 0.95 will equal my force of effort.
okay? Or essentially, if you take a look at it, it's what we did before, okay? And we had our mechanical advantage of one-fifth, okay? Or we had five times 50 over one, and then we're just dividing by that point nine five. okay? Either way, it solves it. You could have even taken your answer and said, hey, I know that it should be 250, and I'm going to just divide that by 0.95, and that will give me my answer. All three of these setups work the same. Here we have our ideal mechanical advantage, and we're factoring in the efficiency. Here we know the ideal force of effort. and we're factoring in the efficiency. And up here, we're using work, okay? So all three cases work. They're all gonna give you the same answer. So if we take this and we plug it in, this one I haven't solved yet, take 250 divided by 0.95, and I get 263 point something, something, something. I only have two sig figs here, so I'm gonna say it's gonna take me 260 newtons of force to do this, okay? And that's just one way we can deal with efficiencies. All right, thank you.